Hi guys, Brendan from TAT. Um, so I want to do something a bit different today. I want to run through a diagnosis that I did recently on a Mazda 2. And um, the way that I use the Pico Scope um, to my advantage to do some testing pretty quickly, um, whereas the tests to do physically would have taken quite a long time. So what you're looking at here is a in-cylinder compression waveform. So I'm using my scope and I'm using a um, pressure transducer to get these readings. To give you an idea of what you're looking at, if you go to the Pico website, they're really good Pico um, on their website. They'll, they'll run you through a lot of tests. This is for the specific tests that I'm showing. So I'm using my scope connected to the WPS 500X pressure transducer. It's a Pico branded one, but um, you could use this on any scope. It, all it does is output a voltage that correlates to a pressure. So you could use it on anything. Um, it comes with a bunch of adapters. So I've got the spark plug out and in line. It's just like I'm doing a compression test. So it comes with a fitting to go in. But the difference with this is I'm able to see pressure while the engine is running. So back to our scope capture. Um, what you're seeing on the red trace is the pressure from that transducer. And what you're seeing on the blue trace is just when the coil event's happening. So I believe I was using a paddle probe. And I just wanted to make sure the spark event wasn't way out somewhere. Um, for this video, really disregard that. And we're just um, interested in the red. So car in question was a Mazda 2. Um, it's the ZY 1.5 litre petrol. Very common. They used it for over a decade or so. Um, came in with the symptoms of poor idle. Um, pretty lethargic when you drive it. But, you know, nothing out of... Out of for a small engine, it didn't feel too bad. Um, you had very low manifold vacuum, and if you took the airbox off, it it popped a little bit back through the intake. So straight away, we're starting to think of timing. Um, it was was setting a fault code, so it was camshaft position sensor performance uh, or something of that sort. So um, you know, you, you could go on a bit of a tangent and start to look into the cam sensor itself, but with those just you know, real world symptoms that it had, I was pretty confident we had a timing issue. So first thing you want to do if you're looking into any kind of timing issue, um, the ideal is to use a scope and get a known good cam and crank pattern uh, called cam crank correlation and compare it to what you've got. So I went to the TAT website, went to the good scan scope data, um, down to Mazda, and luckily enough, there was a uh, same engine, so ZY, cam and crank sensors there. Now, if I was to download that, open it up in Pico, it would show you what I'm talking about. But it turned up perfectly good. So, um, where do you go from there? The The timing seems like it's out, but it's, it's reading good on my cam crank correlation. The reason for that was, there's only one cam sensor on this, and it's reading off the intake cam. Now, this is a double overhead cam engine. So, the VVT gear is on the intake, and always they're going to put the cam sensor on that so they can monitor what's going on. So I'm perfectly happy that the intake cam timing is good. I, I don't want to go looking at VVT solenoids or, or VVT gear phases, any of that sort. I'm happy with it. The thing's running terribly, but I am concerned with my exhaust cam. Now, we could tear the thing apart. We could take the timing cover off. Um, this one, you know, depending, I, I didn't actually get to do the job, but there may be a chance of taking the tablet cover off and physically looking at it, but let's say it's a car that you can't. You know, it's going to take several hours to pull this thing apart. That's where the pressure transducer can come in handy. So we've gone in cylinder, and anyone that's a seasoned user of this will see what the problem is and where it is, but for those guys that haven't used it, um, a cool little tool that we've got on the TAP website again. If we go back to home, and I'm going to go into diagnostic programs this time. So there's so much behind each of these tiles. If you don't go looking, you'll you'll never see all these little programs that have been made. Um, the one that I'm looking for is the compression waveform viewer. Um, there's version one and version two, the compression waveform viewer plus. Um, you can download it. It's only 400 kilobytes. I've got it sitting just here, ready to go. Now, if I put that same picture that we we're just looking at into this little program. Uh, there's all, it's the same picture we were looking at, so in Pico, before I took the snapshot, I already had my quadrants put in there, but just for the sake of this program, we'll put them on again so it can do its own little calculations. So this is just showing 720 degrees, um, two rotations of the crank so that we can go through a full four-stroke cycle. Now I'm going to click this flag events, and what that does is put some theoretical markers that are pretty close to where things should be happening. So the exhaust valve should open here, intake valve opening, exhaust valve closing, and the intake 
valve closing. So logically, if we run through our four-stroke cycle, we've got all of our valves closed, we're going to make some pressure, we're going to have the spark happen, and we're on the power stroke. Coming down here, our exhaust valve will open, and pretty close to that, we should rise up to atmospheric pressure. You can see there's a bit of a delay here. I'm not liking that. Um, we then go through. There's always going to be a bit of overlap on a modern engine where our intake valve opens, our exhaust valve closes. But with an intake valve open and an exhaust valve close, we should pretty quickly pull some vacuum. It's quite a, a um, gap here. And then when we get up to the intake valve closing, it does, as I would expect, react pretty quickly and we, we, we've got all valves closed so we start to make power again. Like I said, I'm pretty happy with where the intake valve is, but this gave me enough evidence to call the customer and say, you know what, I've done two tests to show that the intake valve timing is okay, but the exhaust valve timing, I'm not happy with that. Um, to compare a known good for you, just so you guys can see after the repair, so if we just look at the quadrants that we've got, um, I might just bring up without having the, the flags on it, I'm going to show you the bad versus good. So we're looking at the bad, look at the, this is bad, and look at the quadrants here. So at this first quadrant, there's a bit of a delay. At the second quadrant, a bit of a delay. Now if I pull up the good, things are already happening by the time we're at that quadrant, and then not much delay at all. We're still in that overlap period. It can be a difficult one to judge, I've found, as a, a beginner at this. This is um, something that I'm not massively skilled in I'm looking to use it more because wherever I can use technology to save time I'm all for it but you definitely can see the difference between the good and the bad look at the gap that we've got there look at the the, the time that we've got whereas we were we were already mid um, pressure change on the other one so definitely enough evidence there so you know, it's something that just to keep in your bag, scope's aren't for everyone, but I just wanted to show someone a little bit, show you guys a little bit more of an advanced thing with it. Main thing to take from this really is though, get onto the TAP website and make sure you're looking at what's in behind all of these um, tabs here. So just through that, you know, without TAT, I could have struggled to find a known um, cam crank. There's so many on there or at least if you if there's not one, get onto the technical assistance and we'll go through all of our little databases or um, known people that we know that we can get onto things like that to try and help you out. And that was a pretty um, nice little look into some of the, the stuff that a diagnostic program part can do as well. So hopefully you got something from this one, guys, and I'll see you next time.